Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below. Hi, right, welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Madden Money Shot, sniffing out the Madden cheese as always. I got some plays for you today out of the Vikings playbook. Uh, let me know what you guys want to see. So the first play that I'm going to show you, the one that I'm really all about right now, is the post wheel shallow. All right, so not only is this one of the uh, you know better passing plays that I've seen, I, I really don't know uh, what type of defense would stop everything I'm going to show you, but um, it's one of the easiest too. There's only one adjustment you're going to make, and that's going to be to put Carter here, the triangle route, on slant. That's it. That's all I got to do. If you want to, you can motion Cook out here. I think it's better to leave him as a blocker. But if you want to use the Carter route a little bit more effectively as a check down, uh, it's best to have this uh, you know, running back pulling uh, the zone uh, back so he can come open underneath it. But he's really going to be last in your read progression anyway. So I really wouldn't worry about that. Your number one read is really uh, what Diggs and Treadwell are doing to whatever coverage linebacker is in front of... Um, of Diggs. If it's a man coverage, if you see a cornerback over there, which just looks like a man coverage, uh, typically Diggs will burn this corner on a man route, on a man coverage. Because if you have, As long as you have a speed guy there, the fastest guy guy is Diggs, you want your fastest guy there uh, where, where he's at. Now, he's got Josh Norman on him. I'm pretty sure he'll be, he'll be beating the hell anyway. But if you've got a top-notch speed guy, you want him in that slot position, basically. Um, so, basically what he's going to do, if it's a man coverage, he's going to get toasted. The circle route's going to get toasted. If it's a zone coverage, you're reading what that linebacker or what that cornerback uh, you know, if it's if it's like a dime or a nickel or something like that, whatever the the coverage uh, person is in front of Diggs, you're reading what he's doing. If he goes outside with Diggs, that means Treadwell's going to be wide open. If he goes inside where Treadwell is and tries to cut off Treadwell, that means Diggs is going to be wide open. You're going to have to pass lead to get Diggs open, uh, you know, precisely. But either way, um, one of those two guys is going to get open against his own every time. If they don't for whatever reason, Hodges, the X route tight end, is coming open right underneath them. Uh, for a nice easy check down catch and run probably 10 15 yards so it's really impossible there's too much going on in that one guy's spot for for really any way to one of those three guys will be open every time guaranteed other than that um, like I said, this this route here, this actually play, it looks like, I'm running from the center of the field, but I'm going to show you here. I'm going to call, call pause. You can run this from the short side. It doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and let's respot the ball. So let's make our quick little adjustment. A pass lead to the outside. Like you see, he's, right, he's open right underneath. The second I saw that guy go in, I go outside. I said, you, it's real simple read. You're just reading what that guy in front of Diggs is doing. This looks like a man coverage. And I'm just bombing it up, lobbing it up, I should say. Make sure you lob that pass. Touchdown. So I'll run this a couple times. I'm going to run this to the open side, too. I, I don't want to just... Oh, come on, get them burners, Diggs. Get them burners. Man, Norman is doing a pretty good job out there. One of the better cornerbacks in the game, but he's still getting beat. Norman is... is he probably doesn't really have that type of makeup speed. Here we go. We're going to pass lead outside. Tight window. Yeah, Norman's one of the better corners. He doesn't typically have that type of makeup speed, I don't think. And we're going to, up top to Bradford again. I mean, this is just a great play against man coverage. Touchdown. Yeah, that's the reason all day. The series is the Y curl. Um, so we're gonna go. We're gonna pick that. We'll go uh, random nickel on defense. All right. So this play set's real simple. All I really want to do is put my R1 route on either a streak or a fade. It really doesn't matter. Uh, this one, I, I think, because my can, my coverage looks like it's outside, so I kind of want to go inside and pass lead inside. It's what it looks like the look is going to be. If I think it's outside, I put it on a fade and pass lead outside. Um, you can motion this halfback out. I don't find it's really necessary. I find he works just fine in the backfield, which is one of the reasons I like this play. You're not giving away uh, location of where the ball might go with motions and stuff like that. Um, another adjustment you can do is put Bennett on a slant sometimes, especially if your opponent starts paying attention to that route. I find that it's uh, beneficial. Uh, but you're really playing Nelson off of the triangle route, and then you have your check down, which is Adams, and uh, Bennett's a really good cover three beater. I'm going to go ahead and put Bennett on a streak, not a fade. I keep putting him on a fade. <laughs> so let's go ahead and let's rock this one time. Um, you can see there, I mean, that's a cover three, so Bennett's going to be the read pretty much every time. There's two cover three beaters here. There's uh, Nelson's a cover three beater as well. This looks like another cover three, so let's see if we can get the Nelson this time. And there's the pass lead. That the guy broke on a little bit better than he would on the tight end, though. Doing this recording on a much smaller television. And there we go. That's another cover three. I'm trying not to just stare at the tight end, but it's just such an easy open play. I'll try to put him on a slant because, like I said, that does help a little bit, but I, I don't want to be staring his way the entire time. Oh, that's a corner blitz. Let's go. 
Oh, oh, let's get, let's get them jukes. Oh, we got them touchdowns. Let's get them jukes, bruh. Get them jukes, bruh. Yeah, when you slant the tight end, though, it does, um, you know, in this scenario, I almost feel like it'd be better to motion out the running back if you're going to slant the tight end because you want him to clear a little bit quicker. Um, oh, oh, we're going to another <laughs> We got another touch. We're just putting on these. We're putting on these moves today, bro. Putting on these moves today. I think an in route and then smart route is pretty good too for Bennett. That'll do the same thing. This way you don't have to motion out the running back, and you can see how you have. I think that's called a drive concept. I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, so there's a couple different ways. You, every pretty much every one of my plays, I have a guy that does. Um, you know, he's kind of like a. A, what do you call it? Like a Swiss Army knife. You can kind of do what you want to do. This guy's that guy in this particular play. You see there, they follow the circle, and that just leaves the uh, leaves the tight end open. So it's really up to you. So I don't know which one I like best. I actually kind of think that um, putting Bennett on this um, on this type of play has actually been been pretty good. It gives you a, a pretty good multiple read system over the middle. You can see how that drag typically will pull the linebacker because the linebacker has to react short. So I really think my favorite setup might be this because if it's a cover three like this appears to be you can still pass lead outside and break that uh, route gun short why saint is just absolutely loaded i have a couple of really good plays here i don't know which one to pick first uh but i'll pick one that i haven't uh, shown before the saint's fork this is a really good uh play right here this is this is a very uh hard to cover uh it's got a lot of concepts really to beat any type of play you want to beat so we'll go ahead and we'll pick that now, like I said, this is a wide open passing formation, even though uh, when you're, you know, the opponent's trying to match personnel, they will see things like uh, tight end and running back. So they might not necessarily pick something like a dime. Uh, but in this scenario, um, I gave myself the toughest competition just so I don't hear anybody complaining uh, of what I'm running it against. Um, not a lot of adjustments. The only adjustment I really like to make on this play is I like to put Peterson on a slant. And the reason for that is real simple. Um, it's a it's kind of a delayed slant. Your user opponent will most likely be covering right to uh, to where Fleener and Sneed are. They'll probably start off there, um, and then but you know Peterson just comes open really simple uh, as as an underneath option. Uh, typically, the middle of the field is just going to be wide open because your user's not going to stick around and hang around. Uh, which is, you know, that's that's probably a good idea uh, for the user. Um, there's no motions on this play. You can't motion anybody, uh, which is really unique because you can in a lot of other plays. I'll show you. But this particular one, you can't. Uh, if there's any other, uh, you know, fakes or changes I'd make, uh, if you want this route to be a little bit deeper, you can put this um, tight end on an out route, and uh, it just creates uh, what's essentially like a corner, uh, I'm sorry, a bench switch concept to the one side, which is an option. But ultimately, I think the best way to do it is just put Peterson on a slant. Um, he works really well with Ginn, and then you have Fleener and Sneed are working really well with one another. Uh, but like I said, if you want something a little bit deeper, uh, putting him on that is a good idea. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this flat. It's not It's not actually a flat route. Flat routes typically stop. He keeps going, which is nice. Uh, so, you know, if you do get a catch and run scenario, Fleener's a good, a good um, athlete, so he'll get uh, up the field a little bit. Uh, but I still think, you know... It's really up to you. I think uh, from time to time I'll put them on one of these. You can also put them on a drag. A lot of people um, that are covering the middle really well uh, might, uh, you know, drop back into Peterson, or they might drop back in again, and then that'll leave uh, Fleener open underneath a lot. Uh, that was just a horrible throw, but you can see it was open there. <clears throat> Um, but the drag is not a bad idea. If you have a really competent user middle linebacker, um, there's no way they'll drop everything back, and then there's no way um, that they can cover this tight end coming across the middle of the field. And then there's typically, even if it's a zone, there's nothing really there. Like that particular play was a uh, was a man coverage, which obviously it's going to beat that. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to keep rocking Peterson here. I actually could have waited for the triangle route, but I felt the heat a little bit. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll try to uh, continue to work uh, some of these routes. This drag route for the. Uh, for the tight end is going to get open a lot uh, better for a much better catch and run across the middle there. Yeah, if, you, if it's a cover too, I think putting him, leaving him how he is is really a good way to go. Or putting him on that out route, he'll just get a little bit more if you put him on that out route. If it's a cover three, you can actually put him on a streak and he'll get open a lot of times right at the middle. And if it's a, if it's a uh, man coverage, um, you're better off just putting him on that drag. Um, but there's uh, a couple different ways you can do this. Uh, and that actually looks like that same that cover three I was talking about. As you can see, he's just right there. The safety drops down. I don't even know down, which one will be my favorite play because uh, I typically like to start it off with my favorite play. But I really think the PA pump and go is pretty much up there. But the simpler setup is just to put Sneed here on one of these uh, slant Fleener, block the running back. Uh, like I said, Ginn doesn't really do a whole lot 
But uh, this is a good bench switch concept, which there worked a lot better than the first play. But like I said, I don't really use that play a lot. I really find the best setup to get Gin where I want him to go, it, that's a good route, but it doesn't really work inside like this. You need him outside one-on-one. -on -one. You need some sort of cover three, a man coverage, a man press. That'll beat all those routes deep. I find you need more room than this, so I'll move the ball back here in a second. Uh, but Fleener here on this type of route, if I'm if I'm if I'm isolating the, the circle route, I want to put him on a slant so I have an easy check down, and then I also want to put Snead on that bench switch again, um, so that I have a couple options just in case I got to get rid of the ball faster than I want to. I mean, you can leave uh, Fleener on one of these, and maybe it'll come open underneath, but that's not really the best way to go. Uh, but I think the slant's a little bit better. Always have the running back to block, and uh, I think this would be the best scenario. This looks like a cover two. I'm going to go ahead and move the ball, like I was saying, because I think that this one here, you probably need a good 50 yards of space. This is a real deep play. You need that space because you're really just going to be floating this ball up. You're not bullet passing this. You're lobbing it if I get the look that I want. This looks like a cover six, which isn't what I want. And we got the, the deeper route to Thomas. Like I said, that's you got good routes on both sides, really. But this is just explosive, wide open passing right here. Now we got that look we want. And we're going to just lob that up. Hopefully my man can get the separation. He got caught, but you saw what happened. You saw what happened there. So most of my plays, you have somebody that's kind of, uh, you know, I always call it like my Swiss Army Knife player. That's going to be Fleener. You got to pre-diagnose what you're looking at to make him a, a play. I don't think I threw it again to too much or Thomas. Thomas is a really good route against most things. Uh, let's go ahead and let's throw it out there. As you can see there, he splits between the safety of the cover three. Every route in this play is really good. I mean, I'll, I'll hit Ted Ginn next, the triangle route, if I get a good look, uh, which there I do. That was a cover two. He just comes in a little bit late. He takes a little bit while to get open. But he's still a really good play, and you can't disregard him, especially if you're a user. Yeah, I'm going to float it up this time. We've got a man coverage. The second he makes that break, he's just a really good man beater. So that guy's going to break a lot play. Too. I mean, I think this is just, if you run this a couple times a game, uh, you're just going to pretty much score every time. So there's a really simple trick to it. The first thing I'm going to show you is you want to hit R1 and uh, make sure it's your fastest receiver is outside here if you have like this guy here is like a 92 speed Kenny Stills is pretty fast there's a lot faster guys out there if you just put your fastest guy here I could probably put this George Jirai I think this Grant guy right here just <laughs> Jakeem Grant guy is like a complete speed monster so I'll put him there and I'll make this play really crack uh, so let's go ahead play itself is the PA boot over and we'll go ahead and we'll pick that uh, we'll go ahead and we'll go against random nickel now this play right here, I moved the ball back already all, all the way. You want deep, deep space. I mean, I could run this from like the 90, or uh, I could run this from the 10 and throw it 90 yards. That's how crazy this play is. I used to run this just by putting Thomas on a slant, and I still feel that's a pretty good way to run it. Um, he comes open a lot of times, open underneath everything. He didn't catch anything there, and it was a crazy pick animation because Madden's just a jackass. Uh, but that's still not the worst way to run it. But the way that you want to run it now um, is actually all you really want to do is put the put Parker's route, the triangle route, on a slant, and uh, that's pretty much it right there. You're gonna want as much pass coverage as you can get, uh, but you're basically going to uh, just basically rock back um, until you can lob it up. This is a cover two, and there's just no coverage there at all. He's wide open for a score. So the time is really the issue. Like I said, you just need a little bit of time in the pocket. Um, and we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna pass lead that. Look at that, just wide open. He's being covered from behind. There's guys outside, but there's nobody around him to stop him. Need a strong arm QB too. Um, you know that's that's kind of important. As we're gonna throw this behind everybody, let's go. He was kind of in the area, almost, almost, bro. So this play here, uh, we're gonna run it one more, once or twice more. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna pass lead it outside, and we got another easy touchdown. I mean, it's that simple. It's just too easy. Pass leading is kind of important here, though. As you saw, that's what I did there. It was a pass lead. And we're going to wait for him to cross. Pass lead outside again. And it's just an easy touchdown. I mean, this is just game broken. Consider this game broken if you didn't already. All right, so let's go ahead and let's rock this once or twice more. Get a nice, easy cheese. Lob it up touchdown as we're pass leading up. And it's just ridiculous. Um, like I said, this is probably the number one play EA's got to fix. If more help or just want to show your support, then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.